All right, everybody. Usually when I start this show, I like to say, hey, follow us on our YouTube, Instagram. We've got some extra videos coming up on our YouTube. And I say thank you to everybody. And then I start the introduction uh, for our guest today. But today, I've got, a, I've got a question to ask my producer, Mr. Peyton. And Peyton, that question is, wh- wh- why do you hate me? Why? Why? Did I do something bad to you? No, it's just, you radiate, like, hateful energy. Yeah? It's just easy. Oh, it's yeah? easy to hate you. Oh, really? That's all. Yeah. I just radiate it out of you. You just no radiate reason. out of you. You got a punchable face. Oh. All right. You I know? have a punchable face? I mean, I'm not denying that I don't, but... Look, you and me are kind of in the same ballpark here. Whoa. Where we both just kind of look like victims. Excuse me. (laughs) I look like a victim? Yeah. Compared to you? Yeah, I mean. Compared to you? You said it yourself, getting a beer belly here. I mean, where's the wee Sam that's like, I'm going to go run up a mountain at 4 a.m. I haven't seen him in a bit. You do realize it's taking everything in my body (laughs) not to hold you down and just put you in a headlock. (laughs) And you, if you knew how quickly I could do that, it would be, I believe you. It would be terrifying yeah, for you right now. I know. I know. I kind of <laughs> want to do it just to put a certain fear in you for the rest of your life. But I won't do that. Here's, here's why we'll do I it bring later. that up. Here's yes, why I bring yes. that. Maybe we'll do it on another episode. That'd be fun. That would be fun how quickly I can get you in a headlock. That, that would be fun. Just like a sparring match between us. Because we all know who would win. And it would just be so funny to watch. And the thing is, I would be so down to, like, do it. Just promise you won't, like, kill me or anything. That's <laughs> the thing. You, you, you're not used to it, and so... You're worried you would kill me. Un- I, would, I would be concerned I would hurt you unintentionally where you would throw a kick, <laughs> I would block it, and then, oh, no, Peyton's broken his bone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All he does is block a kick and I'm down. And down. I'm down. I'm out. Here's why I bring this up. <laughs> I'm on my me- you know, the PS5 came out earlier this week mm-hmm. and I'm chilling in my bed and then all of a sudden I get this text message from Peyton said I pre-ordered mine on Target. Hey man, what happened to us like warning each other? I I wish it was in the scenario where like it, it could have been like a coordinated, like, all right, this is when it's coming out. But if I, your, your best friend, Jack Dean, was on Twitter and he's like, oh shit, retailers are like dropping it without warning. Without warning. And I did text you when I was in the process of buying it, it was in my cart. Wow. But sadly, I, and, and this shouldn't be the case. Right. But, uh, you replied at, uh, like 10 minutes later, and it's crazy that 10 minutes later it was, was already too late. That's which is way too much. That's not yeah, right. That's not it, Sony screwed up real bad with the drop of this. When like they dropped, I got on target like immediately. I got it in my cart. I got it there. Texted you. Was like, hey, they're out. I got mine. I think <laughs> it's bonkers. It it wasn't great at all right and i don't understand what's so freaking hard for websites to put in you put to put you in a waiting room say hey if you want to pre-order the ps5 click on this link and now you are in the waiting room oh keep this page open this is your line it'll refresh when you're ready to check out right so the actual site doesn't get overwhelmed like what happened yeah but guess what i was able to pre-order it oh you were yeah, I was waiting on the show to tell you. Oh, shit. And it was kind of miraculous. I'll tell you all the details. But the Best Buy page, with yeah. it, and it was still in my shopping cart. Okay. It wasn't until midnight. And I kept doing it, doing it, doing it. And finally, boom. Oh, there you go. And I got the confirmation number. Oh, perfect. So I think that's good. As long as okay. I got the confirmation and everything. Yes. That I should be Okay, fine. I'm happy for you now. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm okay, happy as good. well. And I got the second controller and the wireless charging station, oh, which is what I wanted. Yeah, yeah. Did you yeah. get a disk drive or no disk drive? Disk drive. I got a disk drive too. Yeah, here's why. I, in case I wanted to play any of my old games. Yes. That, we'll see if it's backwards compatible with the discs. Oh. I hope it is. Either way, uh, I have a Blu-ray player, but I don't right. ever use one. That's the thing. Everything is streamed. Here's my concern, though. It's still as fast, though, right? Mm-hmm. Everything's just put on the solid state drive, correct? 
Correct. Yeah. No, no, no. It's literally $400 if you don't want the disk drive, $500 if you want the disk drive. That's okay. the only difference. And uh, like e even on the box, like all of the, not statistics, all of the, pff, you know, yeah, little everything about it is exactly the same, except all that's included now is like Blu-ray player perfect, can play perfect. in 8K. Perfect, perfect. I'm going to be digitally downloading all my games yes. and we'll talk more details. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's introduce our guest. I don't hate you, but I was kind of like, no, I know. I, dude, if you knew <laughs> how in like going to each web page, Target, GameStop, Walmart, Best Buy, and just watching the sites just crash, and mm -hmm. Twitter being like, what the hell? And then Amazon, on top of everything else, Amazon, they somebody leaked that demon link that made it um, where you what? skip a certain... Yeah, you don't know that? No. With Amazon, somebody leaked the link, which if you clicked on it, it took you past the shopping cart. Like So it would just take you right into your shopping cart, and it's already in there. What? Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> And I think so. People I, took advantage of that. For yeah, sure. absolutely. And I think our awesome, awesome guest just arrived. So let me do a quick intro for him. What's up, Mark? How you doing, man? <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, he just came into the studio. I'm gonna introduce him real quick. We'll take a quick break and then we'll go in. Uh, he's an author, hilarious comedian, a lover. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, let's introduce uh, Mark Hayes. Welcome. Um, yeah, feel free to adjust that. And usually the sweet spot is just under the. Yeah. <laughs> right you know, there. You know, you know. Um, cool, huh? Good. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're alive today. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Les. Yeah. Dying. I know. Oh, shit, I forgot I have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I had acid reflux and the heartburn, I would start coughing because it would get so high up. I would start having like I would feel like having a sore throat. I'm gonna throw up. Is that? I just got like fucking burning. I'm starving. Then if I eat, it kills me. Ooh. So I'm just like, ah, uh, let's just drink water. Do you drink a lot of caffeine? Or yeah, the shit lot. Yeah. That doesn't help us all. No, not at all. Apparently, yeah. any type like coffee, caffeine, or alcohol are like the worst oh, things yeah. to have for that. And I had to drink last night, so I was like, all right, yeah, it's dumb. How often do you drink? Because I'm like a rare drinker. Uh, so. People think I drink a shitload, but it's usually like Friday and Saturday. Yeah. I don't drink during the week. Okay. Yeah. But people always assume they're like, oh, you're drunk the whole time. And I'm like, no. I had a girl get angry at me during the week because mm -hmm. she hit me up and she wanted me to go on a fucking date with her. And I was like, nah, not on a Wednesday. Plus, my Irish buddy was in town last week, so we drank stupid amounts. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't drink all week. <laughs> And then she was like, you're messing up if you don't take me on a date. And I was like, uh, I don't do dates. <laughs> like, in her, yeah, it just didn't seem appealing. She was like, bring me to dinner, wear a suit. I was like, you've come to the wrong person. Yeah. Whoa. She was stupid rich. She was like an heiress. Huh? Yeah. It's just a random heiress. And because she was like, this is so LA. She hit me up on Instagram being like, oh, I like your comedy. Yeah. And she's like, we should go out. And I was like, all right, cool. She's like, tomorrow night. And I was like, ah, it's Wednesday. She's like, just take me. She started naming out these stupidly expensive uh, restaurants like fucking Maestro's or Dantan. I don't know. I was like, I'm not going there. On yeah. the first date, you seem, she's tasty, but she also seemed like a bit psycho. <laughs> she's tasty. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Um, Man, what? Okay. <laughs> this is you are such an interesting guy to me and you have to remember everybody who's listening uh side note we need to change these goddamn mic stands or else i'm gonna lose my goddamn mind on the show and i'm literally this close from snapping just because of everything going on in life oh i don't give a shit how much money we spend uh, we are buying the best fucking mic stands from now on because it interrupts every goddamn interview because this fucker goes like oh, really? That. I don't mind this one. This one's good. Of course it is. <laughs> I don't know you at all. I know you just from social media, and I've seen your stand-up. Yeah. That's it. And so from everything of that, I'm like, I need to know. I need to talk to this guy. <laughs> talk to this dope. I need to talk to him because <laughs> the people you encounter oh, are yeah. amazing. And your reaction to them, I'm like, I would get along with this guy. <laughs> yeah. First of all, 
thank you for introducing us to the TikToker Devin Carley. Oh yeah, he's unreal. Uh, <laughs> he's insane, dude. We did a whole we did a whole show oh, really? on him. Yeah, a whole show because he is out of his goddamn mind. Yeah, on how he looks at the world or how he thinks he's perceived by the world. Yeah, the the scenarios he comes up oh, with, yeah. man. I feel like all TikTok is like that. Dude. The one thing I would say about that dude, Devin, is that like I took the piss out of him. Yeah. And someone tagged him and he commented. He was like, oh, I love this. And I was like, ah, he doesn't seem that huh. detached. So so he was into me taking the piss out of him. All right. So, that made me think, ah, oh, he's not that bad, actually. Hmm. Maybe he gets it. Maybe he knows what he's doing. Maybe he's just <sighs> young and stupid. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> dude. I don't know. Like, I'm I was th- young and stupid too. I'm 33 next month, mm. and I can only imagine if TikTok was around. When oh I was yeah, a high school student. You'd I'd be, be doing porn on it. I'd be canceled. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'd be like, "Who wants to see me wank? Watch oh. this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see me wank? Like, I'm in the Holocaust. Do you see those? Like, they're insane. We did segments on those too, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The 911 ones. Oh, to bring awareness. To 9-11? Yeah. Ins- one the really funny one that fucking still makes me laugh is one girl is like, uh, I got my brother's report card. And I'm going, did you see that one? I was like, I got my brother's report card. And I'm going to tell him that he got all A's. Oh, no, that he failed. And she's like, whatever the fuck, Sean. And the guy comes in and he's like, what's up? And she was like, I got your card. You failed everything. He's like, oh, no. She's like, joking, you got A's. And he's like, you're so funny. And then they start making out. (laughs) Oh, that's genius. I think I've seen that one now that you said it. It's such a curveball that you're like, oh, this is comedy gold. It's unreal. And I was just like, Jesus, that's fucking funny as fuck. (sighs) See, I like something like that. Yeah, when I saw that, I was like, oh, these people are smart too, because that's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. But, man, you... You you come across the weirdest people, it seems like. And you oh, yeah. attract yeah. some of the freaking craziest girls. Yeah. I don't know how you're... You, like, if I always think, like, if, what do I would do in his position? I'd always be like, uh, no, bye. Like, I don't oh, have time yeah. for this craziness. But you seem to indulge in it a little bit, right? I feel like... I think because my parents brought me up to be very, like, polite. <laughs> and not abrasive. I'm always like, all right, is this my fault somehow? Where... I always, I'm like, all right, at what point am I going to say, all right, that's enough. <laughs> you have to stop. I realize now this is insane. If I'm, yeah, it depends. Yeah, I'm very, I do let it go a while. And then I'm like, all right, now's the time mm. that it goes too far. Like there was this girl for ages, years just sending me messages. And she would send me messages like topless, just beating herself up. Like, just hitting her fucking boobs and shit. Oh! Yeah, and she's like, how do I prove my love to you? And just like, I'm just looking at the videos being like, this is insane. And then she'd like, she started hitting her head off a table. What? She's like, do you want me to bleed? Is this how I prove myself to you? And I was just like, this is unreal weird. And then she disappeared, and then she came back. And she just sends me more rambling messages. And then she sent me a video that doesn't disappear. So I put it on my story being like, what the fuck is wrong? Don't do this. And then she just sent me like poems. She was like, I wrote you a love poem. And the poem was basically, why the fuck are you from Ireland? That's not a real place. Be from somewhere else. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a great poem. (laughs) And then I was like, she just kept sending me weirder and weirder stuff. And I was like, "Uh, my stalker's gone off the rails. I put that in my story or something. And she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you think I'm a stalker. I'll never message you again. And I was like, that's how easy. If I just said that years ago, <laughs> stop being a stalker, you wouldn't be hitting your head off tables and walls. <laughs> yeah, so that is weird. Dude, that's beyond crazy. Hurt, <laughs> she's hurting herself for you. Now here's, and I'm not, I don't mean this as an insult. I agree with you already. I'm not worth it. <laughs> well, you're not like super famous. <laughs> yeah, they, you're not like... <laughs> super rich at least i don't think so it's just such a weird person to zone in on you're super talented you're super funny but like it's just a weird target to have for a stalker (laughs) they go weird this dude as well he keeps writing like fucking long raps comments on every post 
And then he's like, I'm your new stalker. And he, now he just tags me and shit. I'm like, why pick someone fucking good? Pick Brad Pitt. <laughs> like, why are you wasting your time on me? Maybe they think you're accessible. Cause they've oh, gone, yeah. Because they've gone through all, like, the A-listers, the <laughs> yeah. C-listers, the D-listers. They've fallen down to me. My buddy, people will, like, open up to me, too, like, way too much. And people are like, my buddy was like, maybe they think you're, like, an Irish priest. And that they can confess shit to you. And that's why, like, this woman used to message me online. And she's like, I don't know why I'm messaging you, but uh, I just cheated on my husband. Huh? And uh, I wanted to tell someone. <laughs> and then every time she would do it, she would message me. She'd be like, I did it again. And then one time she's like, I had a threesome. She's disappeared again. So God only knows. <laughs> Wow, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm just stunned, but that's like another level of crazy that I've never even heard of it's before. It's weird, it's just bizarre that they like feel the need to reach out. I've, I I was in a phase before COVID where people would do that. They would start telling me really personal things. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, why is this continuously happening? And I was like, you know what, maybe it's me. They feel comfortable, so I'll just listen. And if that makes them feel better, yeah. cool. But sometimes it was like, hey, man. I just met you. I don't need to know this. Oh, yeah, like yeah. this is all right. You need to calm down yeah. a little bit. Like you're getting, you're giving off really weird vibes. <laughs> yeah, right? I know. If it, if it's, if I've never met them, I don't feel as bad. If I did meet them and they started telling me that, I'm like, ah, all right, I can't see you ever again. You're psychotic. Plus, in America, you do overshare feelings way too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like as an Irish man, it's uncomfortable. Mm. We don't even tell each other, oh, I love you. It'd be like, ah. That's in Ireland. If you say to, if I said to my buddies, "Oh, I really like a girl," they'd be like, "Ah, that's a bit gay." <laughs> <laughs> to a girl? <laughs> yeah, it was like you can't show emotion. You're like, all right, let's be a real man and like men. Well, you kind of hang out in the Hollywood, West Hollywood area, or no? Yeah, yeah. That's that's a little bit i know there are sane people over there but that seems to be like the hollywood really psycho yeah it's the congregation of when people first move to la yeah, yeah. they hang out there and yeah. it's people you know starting their dreams starting their new life the crazies from other town just wanting to start a new yeah. and it's not the best environment to do it in and i feel no. like that's probably another reason why all these crazy people are yeah. around you constantly yeah it's weird right i do like west hollywood because there's all something's going on i always wondered at the start when i first came here that's why i started writing books i was just like all right i gotta write this weird stuff down and then i was like i wonder if this will ever stop and it never stopped no. <laughs> so it just keeps on going like there was another time there was a girl uh i seem to like attract heiresses she was like an heiress to a big fucking fortune <laughs> yeah it was like insane yeah and then she was just like she asked me out and i was like oh yeah maybe like didn't fucking say anything like concrete and then the day came and i was like oh i can't i got a show she was like oh go fuck yourself how dare you you don't no one stands me up blah 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 jesus and i was just like all right well i dodged the bullet here yeah and then a week later she was like i'm sorry i was overreacted um that's my fault. She's like, you should come over to my place. Let's have a drink. And I was just out and I was near her place. And I knew that, like, it's a nice, it's a rich building. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let's go over. This could be a story. And she's like, I live in the penthouse. So I was like, oh, she must be minted. Mm -hmm. This could be funny. So I went over there. And I was, she was like, just tell the concierge you're coming up to my apartment. So I told him. And uh, she was sending me all, like, provocative stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, this will be a good laugh. And I went there and I said her name to the concierge and he was like, oh, does her husband know you're coming? And I was like, huh? And she was, yeah, he was, oh, yeah, you didn't know she was married. And I was like, no. And he was like, yeah, he doesn't want anyone going up there unless I phone him. He's like, let me call him quick. I was just like, eh. He was like, he's a wrestler. He's like one of those famous wrestlers. He's like, shut the fuck up. He goes, all right. Like Triple H or somebody yeah, like yeah, that. He You're goes, like, oh, uh, fuck Triple H's wife, Harris' wife. What? He, yeah, he was like, and I'm just standing in the lobby being like, oh, Jesus, what's happening? He goes, yeah, there was some guy came last week and they got in a brawl here in the lobby. 
So now my adrenaline's running, being like, ah, oh, fuck, am I going into a fight over some fucking girl I don't even know? And he's like, let me phone her. Let me phone her. And I was like, here, look, let I'll just go outside. I don't want to cause that. It was like too nice of a building to be fighting in. Yeah. I don't want to get arrested and deported. That's what goes through my head. So then I leave and I message her and I was just like, yeah, your man was on about your husband. What's that about? And she was like, yeah, go fuck yourself. Don't ever stand me up again. Whoa. And I was like, wait, what? She goes, yeah, the look on your face was priceless. So I was like, oh, she did all of that to get me back for like not going to meet her for a drink. What a bitch. <laughs> I kind of admired how psychotic. I was like, at least you got the concierge in. I went back to the concierge and I was like, that was funny. Good work. And he was like, thank you. Whoa, dude. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, thank fuck it and go up there. Could you imagine what would have been even worse? You start dating her and you find this out like, a yeah. year into the relationship, yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. You've got your claws into me, you know? Yeah, I know. Especially when they're worth, like, she was worth over half a billion or something. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. I'm like, oh, she could easily make me disappear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, full on. If that concierge was that committed. Oh, yeah. He oh, you know. F- fully into it. I was just like, jeez, he saw me well. Man. Looking back at it then, I was just like, Ah, yeah, he kind of oversold it, but I didn't know. He was like, he's the kind of guy that'll smash a chair off your head. And I was just like, okay. All right. <laughs> I thought I was coming here for a fun time, but uh, this doesn't seem fun. It seems, though, realistic if I was in your shoes. Like, this guy's probably seen so much stuff as a concierge in a rich building. Yeah. They probably see oh, everything. Yeah. Yeah, so time. I'm like, I don't really trust this guy. Yeah, that's what I was like. Oh, he's looking out for me. Yeah. He's on minimum wage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no reason for him to lie to me. <laughs> and she must have been hiding in the lobby because she was like, the look in your face. Oh, oh, that. And then because the lobby was like big and plush and I didn't, I didn't see anyone in there. So she was hiding somewhere to make, to look at me. And I was like, oh, what a fucking or psycho not. What if she was on watching it in the security room on the camera? That would have been even. Yeah, weird. there was like she had she saw it because she was like the look yeah. in your face, and I was just like, "All right, you psycho!" From sliding into my DMs a week ago to this. That's a bored person. That's someone oh, yeah, who's rich. so rich they don't know what to do. Yeah, they th- just oh, I'm gonna ruin people's lives. I think that's the <laughs> only thing to do today. It was so weird too because on the way over there, she was like sending me nudes and stuff, and I was like. Why did she over? They both oversold it a lot. I was like, "All right, good work." Man. Well, uh, dude, uh, uh, your books. So I bought pre dumb and ran dumber. Mm-hmm. I haven't got ran dumb. Yeah, I gotta get on to my publisher. I think they gotta print more. Uh, yeah, it's like really expensive. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I didn't want to say anything, but yeah. it was like fifty dollars, <clears> and I'm means, like, oh, yeah. is, this a, "Is this a signed edition <laughs> yeah. or something like that?" Um. <laughs> Are are you? Do you do the audiobooks for them? No, I haven't done them yet. Here, I highly suggest that. Yeah, it's just I know that's going to be so much work. <laughs> it is like doing a podcast. You're just like, all right. I tried to do like, especially when I'm reading it, I'd have to be fucking put in a boot and just do it. I'll read it. I was doing some reading somewhere, maybe on my podcast, and I kept like just deviating, telling more of the story, and I wasn't reading the book. I was just like telling the story in my own words. <clears throat> I was like, oh, shit, this isn't the book. I think people would really enjoy it. Yeah, I got to do because it. Because I years. hear your voice <laughs> yeah. saying the stuff. And the thing is, if someone didn't know you yeah. and they're reading it, they'd be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah. These are interesting pauses or, or, or period <laughs> yeah. breaks. Like, what is this guy Oh, doing? yeah. I, like, for my first book, my publisher was like, you got to get it down. I think it was from, like, 90,000 to 70,000 words. And I was just like, What? That's they crazy. were right because it's a comedy book. You don't want it like a fucking tomb. And uh, is that how you pronounce that word? Tomb? T O M E? Yeah, tomb. Oh, yeah. I thought I was doing the wrong. Um, you can say Tom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just going to make you say Tom for the rest of the <laughs> a, a Tommy. Um, and so I just started cutting out words. So instead of being like, I went to the bank, I would just say bank. 
and then I instead of going, I went to the bank, and then I went to the shop, and then I got drunk. I just say bank shop drunk, <laughs> <laughs> just to pick up the pace. Yeah. And then people were like, "What an interesting style! Why did you pick this, like beat poetry style?" Yeah. And I wanted to be like, "Oh, it's just my genius." And I was like, "No, I just needed to get rid of fucking twenty thousand words." It is a genius. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, people can check it out. There's, um, uh, it's random. Ran dumber and pre dumb. Pre dumb before I came. Before yeah, which are all great. And if you want to hear the ridiculous stories of them, uh, they're on Amazon and then some other places, yeah, right? All over, yeah. yeah all books over. up from West Hollywood. Cool. Uh, we're just gonna take a quick break and then we'll just jump back into it. We'll oh, yeah. back. I am so impressed with your podcast because I feel like you take one giant breath. <laughs> and you just do the fucking thing in one breath. It's on real gibberish. <laughs> Dude, the first time I listened to it, I rewind, rewound a few times and I'm like, I think I'm missing something. I wasn't missing anything. It was just yeah. your style is so incredible. And I mean that as a compliment. It's totally different from any other podcast, which I love. And the pace is wonderful. I feel like a friend has just came in <laughs> and was telling me about their insane week. Yeah, that's, which is nice. Yeah, I, I, I like people are like you should have structure to it. I was like I can't do structure. It's just me going. All right, what's coming out of my head? I'll black out after it, and I'll just be like oh, I don't even know what the fuck I said. And then like people will tell me all oh, that. People will text me something. They'll be like, blah blah blah, and I'm like, what's that from? And they're like, oh, I'm listening to your podcast. And I was like, really? What one? And then I go, oh fuck yeah, I do remember that now. Yeah. yeah, it's just rambling gibberish. It's incredible, man. I remember one time I sang for 10 minutes on the intro. I was just like singing a gibberish. And I was like, oh, let's see how long I can go. And I did a 10 minute of like, oh, like of that bullshit telling the story. Was this recently? No, no. I think it was one of the older ones. All right. And then I was like, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> you have to be a big fan to listen to me sing for 10 minutes. How, how often are you in the States? Um, I'm here all the time. I, you, we can't leave. No, you can't leave and come back unless you have a fucking green card. Yeah. Or a citizenship. My parents were in Scotland for a year. They were stuck. Oh, there. really? Yeah. Stuck there? Yeah. They were taking friend, uh, taking care of a friend's uh, last wishes and last will kind of stuff. Oh, Jesus. And um, they, it was like, well, we're just going to stay because our visit visa or whatever it is. They oh, extended yeah, it, yeah. And it's fucking beautiful in Perth, Scotland. So yeah. they're like, well, we're staying here for a little bit. I'm like, please do. Don't come to the States. <laughs> and they were starting to get worried because of the borders, people, you know, closing down and everything. But finally, they were able to come safely, which was great. Really? Yeah, they came, what's, what's, so we're in September, right? Yeah. August. Oh. And the flight was half empty. It was all safe. The oh, airports yeah. were like Dead. empty. Yeah. And it was, it was at the point where airlines are like, we got to start making flights again or we're oh, going to yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had a, um, one of my Irish friends just left, and I don't think he knows that he might not be able to get back in. Oh. Yeah, and he's like, I told him, and he's like, he's very blase. He's like, no, nah, I'll be grand. And I was like, I don't think so. If he's a lawyer, told me, he's like, if you leave, you might you probably can't get back in. Mm. Um, And he posted a picture of himself in Vienna, and I was just like, ah, oh, he could be stuck. Over there, because like you, if you're England, Ireland, European countries, there's so many that uh, the US have closed off, so you're kind of yeah. fucked. Peyton, um, I don't know what's gonna happen. I think we're gonna be like this for a while, yeah, at least February. I don't know, I don't have a clue. I have another buddy, like a good English friend, he's going to London for work and he can't get back in now till at least February, yeah. Yeah, no, I think the whole situation is completely screwed until at least I'm going to say things will start start getting back to normal end of the spring. Yeah, I have no fucking idea. Yeah. I want there to be live shows again for comedians and oh, some yeah. other stuff. Yeah. Um, for actors as well because not only are the artists suffering but also the the club owners, the, the yeah. people who work at the clubs. Yeah, it's fucked. It's a whole chain link of yeah. people who are just not working. And they're like, places are shutting down that seem to be... I remember when Swinger shut down. I was like, no, nah, that can't be true. The diner? Oh, yeah, that shut down early into it, too. No. Mm. How the fuck does that place shut down? Every time I've ever driven by that, yeah. it was busy. 
I don't know. It, was, it shot early, like probably a month in. And it's gone. They were like, <clears throat> I remember a friend told us. And we were like, oh, shut up, you idiot. That's not shutting down. It was too early to shut down, and it's gone. They so. must have been in debt, or that oh, yeah. rent must have been f- yeah. through the roof. Yeah, so I, I do wonder. Like, places just be gone, and you're like, yeah. oh, no, that's fucked. You do this. Uh, sorry, I know I'm jumping all over the place, but there's just so much I want to talk to you about. The live Zoom. Oh, yeah. That, how's that been going? Oh, that's great. That's probably one of the best things about the fucking the quarantine. People love it. So do we just come on? I, I, I don't like the thought of doing Zoom comedy shows. Like, I won't know if a joke's funny or not through Zoom. Mm-hmm. But people were like, you should do something. So I was like, all right, I'll go boozing on Zoom. So people just come on and we booze, just chat, have fun. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but like it's a whole little community now. Like people became friends out of it. Oh, nice. They got each other jobs. They went fucking traveling after meeting on the Zoom. That's amazing. Yeah, they had sex through it. Um, oh great you yeah got just all these random videos of it <laughs> <laughs> no people were like oh I met up with so and so and yeah it's weird I had a guy he was sending some dick pics on it he got banned oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was just yeah it's a little community but it's a good laugh I was like I'll do it for an hour and now they're like four hours long <clears throat> wow yeah sometimes I'll leave and I'll just keep going like five hours six hours <laughs> yeah man yeah, it's weird. That's cool, though. You found a way to make some money, it seems like, and yeah. and do something that you love to do. Yeah, and time. I've started doing like little small shows here and there. You just can't tell people where they are because the cops will shut them down. Oh, yeah. But like, I didn't realize that all the big comics are dying to get up. So I did a show recently and like, who was on? Michael Rappaport, Bill Burr. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was Craig on that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was just on. Last oh, week. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's hilarious. Craig. Um, like next week, Jim Jeffries is on. Yeah, they're all dying to get up, dude. Because even like uh, someone texted me at something, they were like that joke about dust and eyelids, and I was like, "What do you want about?" <laughs> and they were telling me one of my jokes, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh Jesus, it's been so long." Wow. <laughs> yeah, that like I forget part of my own joke, and I'm like, "Jesus," because <clears throat> yeah. from going doing it every night. To not doing it in like fucking, I, I it was six months between my first and last show, or last and like last two weeks ago I think, and I was like, oh that's a six month gap. Yeah. Let's see if my fucking motor skills kick in, and I remember the jokes. That's awesome. Yeah, and it worked. I know it's always weird to receive compliments, but I think that just shows how good you are at what you do at your craft being able to jump back into it. I think amateur comedians would not be able to do yeah. it because you didn't have enough hours. Per yeah, day. yeah. Um, and I've heard some of the other comedians on their shows and everything talk about like, oh, I'm worried about getting back into it. But then some of them have already performed and they talked about it again on their podcast. And they're like, they did one show. They said the one show was a little rough, which I'm sure was still freaking hilarious. But yeah. then they're like, oh, then the second show was like, oh, yeah, I've got this again. Yeah, yeah. And it's just incredible to watch people who, like Bill Burr, dude, I was lucky enough to see him live once and it was like watching a fifth degree black belt. Oh yeah, yeah, he's on real. Uh I was just astounded at mm. not only how la- how hard not just me everybody was laughing but the technical aspects of what he was doing and how he like was able to craft certain beats and feeling oh, yeah. the audience. Yeah. Dude, on real. He's just so comfortable, and he's doing it so long. He's unreal. He'll, like, lure you in. He's just so comfortable. He knows where he's going. Yeah, man. It was really cool watching a bunch of comedians like that. Yeah. It was a, it was a really strong show that night. They were doing some benefit. This was, like, a while ago. I'll tell you more details about it at the break. Um, but, um, yeah, man, I, 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 I'm going stir-crazy. My show got pushed to next spring. I booked a, a pilot for NBC. Oh, really? All right. Yeah, but... Uh, they were like, we were two days into filming it, and they were like, come back to L.A. We were in Jersey. And then everything got shut down. On the way. Yeah, and they're like, okay, we're going to push it to next spring after like a month and a half. Jesus. And I was like, okay, and I'm just waiting till the spring <laughs> to hopefully work again. And I'm luckily doing other self-tapes and that kind of stuff and yeah. helping my, my buddies and doing self-tapes. So I'm still kind of acting and keeping it fresh. Yeah, yeah. But... 
It's not the same. There is nothing like performing. Oh yeah. That's yeah. I, I know, know it's not the same. Like obviously I'm not doing stand up, but the aspect of either performing on set mm. or like a theater show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah, I know. That's the thing, you just want to keep the spark alive. So mm-hmm. you don't go back and you're like, Oh fuck. Yeah. It's gone. It's I fun feel- when you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, all right. It just takes time to get there and then you're like, Oh fuck. All right. I feel like comfort is key, like with Bill Burr. He's so comfortable. He, like if the crowd turns on him, he's just like, All right, let me show you exactly what I meant. And then he wins them over. Mm. Whereas like if you panic and you're just like, Oh Jesus, I didn't mean to say that. You're just like, oh, it's yeah. a level of comfort and awareness because you could also be comfortable and be comfortably dumb up yeah. there and just be like, oh, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's saying. Oh, yeah. He said something like that where everybody, you could feel certain people in the room just go, oh, you yeah. just feel that energy. Yeah. And he's like, you guys feel that? <laughs> <And> like, <laughs> he calls it out. Yeah. <laughs> the, that is the key. Like, if you can call out doing comedy, if you can call out something. Yeah. The audience will relax because they're like, all right, he's aware. If you're bombing, the audience will like fucking, they'll lose their confidence in you and then they feel bad and it's just, you can't get it back. Absolutely. So if you're like, I love silence up there because you're just like, oh, this is nice. Like, I know what you're, you're listening at least. My whole set, they're just silent. <laughs> <laughs> silent and confused, being like, what's he saying? <laughs> I doubt that. Um, <laughs> Last week I told Craig something and you nailed it. It's the awareness aspect. Having why, why these great comedians are so good at what they do and why they're, they're responded to so positively is because of their super awareness on stage. They're, mm. they're completely in the moment. Yeah. So the audience has to just completely be in that moment. Yeah. And that's where like really cool things happen. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, and I even heard Bill Burr say this too. Sometimes you'll be, you'll have like a really good, just say if you're doing a weekend of shows, you'll do like Thursday to Friday to Saturday to Sunday one usually. Mm-hmm. You might have an unreal, say Friday second set, might be really good. And then the mo- next set you'll be like, oh, I'm gonna do it just like I did last night. Mm-hmm. So you're not in the moment, you're trying to like replay it and it yeah. doesn't go as well. And you're just like, ah, oh, fuck, I killed my last set. Right. That didn't work because you're trying to like just redo it as opposed to be like, all right, it's a new crowd, be in the moment. So, yeah, if you're like, even the best can fucking lose that fucking, what is it, mindset? They're like, oh, I'd be in the moment as opposed to let's, like, if you try to do the same podcast twice, you're like, oh, that was unreal, the last one with Craig. Let's do the same with Mark. And then we have this awful podcast. Yeah. Uh, You'll be like, oh, fuck, I should have been in the moment. Exactly. Or you're talking about something outside of the podcast and you try to talk about it on the oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. I've made that mistake like early on. Yeah, <laughs> really? And I'm like, why isn't this working right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You can't bring it. Yeah, you can't translate it. Yeah, that's a balls. But it's funny. That's why I was like, let's save it for the show. I just don't want to. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. I feel so rude sometimes saying it. Yeah. People will be like, hey, yeah, just let's not talk right now. Let's yeah, just- I know. Because <laughs> like my buddy wanted to do i have this like singer buddy and we were going to do a podcast and we were like oh because we were crying laughing telling each other stories and we were like we just just do this on a podcast and straight away i knew if we were to go into the podcast and be like so you remember that time (laughs) it's just like contrived and it's not going to be as good and like if i hate the aspect of like if you told me a story and I laughed at it, and then you retold it, and I'd have to be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I've already just laughed at it. And then you're just fake laughing. You're like, oh, fuck that. It's like dreams. <laughs> yeah. Never tell anybody about your fucking dream. <laughs> never. Uh, That's the rule. I'm, I made a rule right now. You never tell anybody about your dreams. I've been on dates, and girls are just telling me about their dreams, and I'm just like, oh, this is awful. I wish I was on my own, drunk. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I have, I barely have a filter anymore. And Peyton knows that my face, I cannot hide my true feeling on my face anymore Oh yeah. on any red carpet or any kind of thing anymore. <laughs> I can't deal with it anymore. Yeah. That means you, your brain has snapped. Oh, oh man. You have no idea. Th- these are the things that drive me crazy. The artificial, the fakeness. I can't yeah. deal with fakeness anymore. So with a lot of red carpet things, it was a surprise to me. You know, I was really nervous the first time I was doing them. And then after I realized, I'm like, 
oh man, nobody knows what they're doing here. Yeah. And it's all fake. And the questions they ask, they're just trying to get sound bites. Yeah. And it's the same question. Yeah. And I can't stand this question. You just wrapped like season two of a show. Just wrapped it. And they're like, what can we expect from season three? <laughs> well, I'm the actor. So I don't know. Yeah, it's the creator's just... down there. You want to ask him <laughs> if he'll divulge what he's going to do for next season and then ruin the show? Like, what kind of questions, like, what do you think you're going to get? What just, do you think you're going to get out of this question? They, they want you to say something racist. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if they're asking you dumb questions, they're like, all right, someone has to snap. And yeah, I can even tell when you were retelling that story, you were taking out a gun in your head, <laughs> being like, shut up. On the flip side, when like a reporter or the journalist actually is good at what they do and they ask you like a really nuanced question you've never heard. Oh man, I still remember this reporter. Don't remember her name. Remember she was from Brazil. She asked this question. I was like, thank you so much for asking a good question. Oh yeah. If, yeah, they just used their brain. I remember I was on a Ray Capper one time. My buddy was doing some comedy for MTV. And they brought us both. And they were like, oh, two comedians are right, perfect. And they were interviewing. And then while the girl was like, earnestly, fakely, I didn't realize. But I thought, I was like, oh, she's interested in what I have to say. Snoop came along. And they were just like, she was like mid-question. She goes, oh, you got to leave. Like, they just cut us off. And publicist just goes, get the fuck out of here. Snoop is here. And I was like, ah, oh, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> Dude, <clears throat> if I ever get that famous, like Snoop Dogg famous, and I see my publicist do that, I'd yeah. be like, no, actually, let them finish. <laughs> I, no, we're not. We're letting them finish. Look actually, at, I'm doing it with them. <laughs> yeah. I'd say looking back in it, they weren't even recording. They were just pretending. That's happened to me before. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, and it's heartbreaking because then I just go, oh, fuck this industry. I don't want to fucking be in this town again. Fuck those interviewers, yeah. and you just want to walk away. That's you can tell when they're uninterested. You can tell. Yeah, yeah. That's why stand-up is good, though, because you can, like, anything stupid or bad that happens, you can just translate, oh, this could be a bit. Oh, my God. You want to know something embarrassing? You want to hear an embarrassing story? Please. How I wished I would just leave and... Like I wanted to cry, scream, and hit somebody all at the same time. <laughs> I was hired, and it was my first and only time doing this, to be a co-host of the Oscars r red carpet show. Oh, no way. Yeah, you're, you're, you said it. <laughs> you're like, oh, wow. Yo, that's pretty no, good. I meant that it was, uh, it was good. It's not my thing, man. <laughs> it's definitely not my thing. Because they're like, uh, you're going to do the crowd work and you're going to be d talking with people oh, and like yeah. interviewing random people. I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm here with with the crazies who literally waited since morning before <laughs> I got there to see a celebrity. Oh. And it was the most surreal experience of my life. I have an earpiece and they're, sc they're screaming in my ear. Really? Because it's so loud. Oh, all right, yeah. And they're like, we're going to you. Make sure you interview this person. And I'm like, I can barely hear my thoughts. No way, really? How, how the hell am I going to interview this crazy person who was excited to see Jennifer <laughs> Aniston walk in front of them like it's a zoo? Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, that is crazy. They're all from the Midwest. They're super nice, but I've never seen people's eyes glass over whenever they've seen a celebrity like that. Really? It's, it's uncomfortable, man. And what happened was they my publicist was super cool she's like i got you some interviews on the red carpet i'm like what the fuck i don't have anything to plug right now yeah. what am i going to talk about yeah, yeah. so i was just pl plugging the show and then i remember them just being so uninterested every <laughs> single one they're here to talk to like literal movie stars yeah. and i'm here like my podcast is pretty cool you guys want to check it out it's on itunes <laughs> yeah you know that's going to the oh delete oh i got a good picture out of it on the red carpet oh yeah that's a Sometimes you just got to get one thing. Because, like, I'll go do it, and then if I go to some... Oh, I hate those, right? I, uh, yeah, they're awful. They just, like, they're soul-sucking. Um, but I remember, like, getting a picture, and then some Irish newspaper were like, oh, he was at this event. Shit. Mm, yeah. And then it was just like, oh, um, write an article. They, like, perception is key at times, so people think you're doing X, Y, and Z. They're like, oh, he's done this, he's done that. Even though it's fucking awful, 
it'll like lead to something else. That's true. Eventually. Yeah. Or you'll have a shitty story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got to take a quick break and then we'll be back. We'll jump back into it. Cool. Pink shorts. Oh, yeah. I forgot it was on video. And I was like, yeah. oh, this is a bold, bold statement. Very bold. It's confident. To be showing knees on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're framed. Oh, no, we're not framed up anymore. I, see, I literally see the camera pointing down. <laughs> down to a dick print. So how long are you? In the, so you're, you're here for the States for the while yeah. because of the COVID thing. And then what I'm curious to know what initially brought you to America, specifically um, L.A., Oh, like to do comedy and writing. Yeah. I wanted to do like a sitcom. Yeah. And then I was in Ireland. Like I was in there. I had some meetings in Ireland with the main TV station. And then they were like, who the fuck are you again? Because I wrote a script and they were like, oh, come in and meet us. And then at the time, this was random. I was like a German gun translator for the Irish Navy. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. So like I've got like a master's in... Uh, e-business and I was just like fucking doing that not knowing what to do and then I had like a commerce and German degree so after I finished my masters I was like fuck what now my aunt was like oh she knew a guy in the navy and they were they bought a load of the Irish navy bought a load of guns off the German navy but the guns were so old they're literally from like world war ii all the manuals were in German and not online so they like fucking six or seven of these big thick manuals big guns that you sat into and they are they knew how to work them but like for their own logistics they needed someone to translate them and my aunt was like do you want to do it and i was like no that sounds awful and then she told me how much and i was like oh yeah i'll do it it was like a shitload of money wow so i did one and i was like it was so tedious i couldn't get over how boring it was wow so i just found people online to do it so I like subcontracted it and then I was like, oh, I've got all this free time. I'm going to write a script because I love Seinfeld and shit and Curb and I was just watching that. And I was like, let me try and write one. So I wrote one and then I had meetings with TV people and then they were like, oh, you you work fucking for the Navy? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, nah. What? So then I was like, all right, fuck you. I'm going to go to LA. That's why. Whoa, that's so weird. They didn't want they didn't want you to it's, work. Yeah, it's a very closed. I don't know. It was weird. You had to be like, oh, you're not in the industry. They're yeah. like, come back when you're in the industry. Oh, that's, dude, I can't. <laughs> yeah. do, I, I can't do a big enough eye roll for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I know. Yeah, so I just moved here, like an idiot. But I used that translation money to come here. Dude, I love that ballsy. Just moved to oh, another yeah. fucking country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not working out here. I'll go somewhere else. Oh yeah, across the ocean. I think I was watching the hills too much too, and I was like, "Wow, LA looks like fun." <laughs> yeah, like, and then I loved America. I used to watch like Sweet Valley High, Baywatch, mm-hmm. Showgirls, the movie, and oh. I was like, "Oh, the American women." Yeah, <laughs> that seems to be better than the Irish women. Yeah, what are Irish women like? They're nice people. Yeah. You, you don't want to generalize. <laughs> what are some of them like? Um, no, it's just in America, like, especially in LA, I, even if, no matter where else you go, especially except for New York during the day, the women in LA are just like, sweet Jesus Christ. How is, how are, is there so many hot women everywhere? I get what you're saying. Oh, but then you realize, oh my God, what is coming out of her mouth? Yeah, and that's the problem with me. <laughs> yeah. That when I first came out here, it was that kind of thing where I can't even concentrate. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, like, literally, sounds so creepy. <laughs> and I'm not going to say it just because everybody's on edge right now. I'll say it. Like, any type of woman you want. The same thing for a girl. Any yeah. type of guy or vice versa. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's all here at your fingertips yeah. and it is overwhelming until you start talking to a lot of them and you're like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Some of you are just crazy. Some of you don't know what you want. Some of you, I don't want to be around. I don't like, I don't know. I'm with age too. I mean, how old are you? 35. Yeah. I don't know, man. You gotta be able to sit down and talk to somebody. Yeah. Before, no. Like I, I don't have any patience. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus I do. It's funny for comedy, but it's also like, ah, uh, I, I have a, bad habit of projecting a personality onto someone oh like what do you mean so like if i'm texting a girl i'll be like 
oh, she's like, I'll think the best of someone. Oh. So of the conversation, and then I realize, oh, I'm doing a lot of the funny work here. And then I'll meet them in person. And I'm just like, oh, she wasn't refreshingly honest. She was just a bitch. Yeah. Or stuff like that. I'll like definitely project. That's my fault. I'll be like, oh, let's put it, what I think your personality yeah. is onto you. And then I'll meet them. And I'm just like, oh, you're actually very dull. Yeah. I thought you were just being like coy. Stuff like that. Plus, like, the shit women say here in public, Americans in general, or people in LA, like in Ireland, you'd have to be very drunk. You'd have to be fucking in an after party to be honest out loud. Whereas, like, I remember one time on a date, a girl was like, oh, you look like you're into glory holes. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there in a coffee shop being like, oh, cool. And everyone's just looking at me now. And I'm just like, ah, that's a good... She's like, it's not bad. It's just your vibe. Whoa, that's so rude on a first date. <laughs> yeah. Dude, re reverse those roles. Oh, yeah, I know. And yeah. imagine what would happen. Yeah, I know. It's, it's nuts. Sometimes I hear these stories and I'm like, oh, if that would have happened to me and I'm in the mindset when I was younger and dating, I would have just gotten up and left. Literally not saying anything, just be like, oh. Yeah. I just got up and leave. And she's like, where are you? <laughs> yeah. I left. The problem is, I it goes back to my parents. They were like, they raised me too polite. So I was just like, oh, I must have said something wrong here. My brain goes to, what did I fuck up? How did I do this? So I'll stay and I'll be like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, glory holes, like, they, they could be good. I don't know. I just won't. Unless I'm drunk and then I should be like, all right, fuck this. See yeah. you later. Sober me is too polite. Yeah. And that's how I end up like a fucking crack tens or gay orgies or whatever oh. the <laughs> fuck I ended up. And I'm just like, huh, there's a lot of dudes here. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's yeah. an Irish upbringing, I think. Well, how long have you been in LA? So like 10 years now. Oh, okay. So, and you're still nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I envy that. I kind of envy that because yeah. I've gotten colder. Oh, on. yeah. I used to read some books. I would like go. Books have kept me sane here. Yeah. A good one is, um, two good ones that I recommend to everyone is The Road Less Traveled. Yes. That's a classic. Yeah. And then The Tao of Pooh. Don't know that one. <laughs> oh, it's unreal. It'll like just make you fucking let shit go. It's about Taoism and then Winnie the Pooh. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. It's like a fucking, it's oh, really good. Really funny. And it's just like, it breaks shit down like using those characters. And I just remember being like, oh, it, the, like, uh, the main thing I got from it was like, let shit go. Like, you can't control everything. Mm -hmm. So you like, I'd be like, oh, this motherfucker, that motherfucker. And I'm like, all right, that's them. It's not me. So let them be nuts. And I'll just be me. That's a great way it, of living it. Oh, yeah. If you, I'll read a book sometimes. And I'm like, why am I reading this book? And then I'll get one good sentence out of it and it'll stick in my head. And I'm like, all right, that fucking shitty book was worth it after all. Yeah. Although I've stopped trying to do that now. I have I couldn't give up on books before. I felt like it was rude. <laughs> and I'm like, why am I reading this book? Um, I'll start skimming. Yeah. And then, but, but then, I, oh, yeah, halfway through, I'm like, oh, I like this book. I'll be reading. Did you, I think you were messaging me about Murakami. Some of his books, I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? And then at the end, I'll be like, I don't know what was happening, but I liked it. He, uh, sorry, you were going to say something? No, no, I was just like, so I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. So you just have to finish it, and you'll be like, all right, that was worth it. Yeah. Like, if I'm doing a project, I've been trying to, during COVID, I've been, like, writing fucking three books, and I'm just like, do I even like these books? Like, why am I doing this? But it's just me trying to sabotage myself because once they're done, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was worth it. Mm -hmm. Finish it through. Yeah. Instead of I could have convinced myself, ah, oh, I should be writing stand up or doing something else. So I think finishing shit's key. I don't know what the fuck my point is here. I'm rambling with heartburn. That's so unlike you. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> the worst is like when I'm like, ah, where am I going? Then I'll break into song. Uh, before you break into song, Murakami, he, mm -hmm. um, I, my, my friend uh, Isaiah, uh he loves him and i gotta tell this story to him because i think he'd appreciate it first of all one of my favorite stories by murakami is whenever he was he, he uh he, isaiah told me he was talking about this like long distance runner 
or he long distance runs. Yeah, he yeah he yeah. wrote a book about it. Yeah, yeah, and he talks about how like at a certain point he looks at himself like just a machine running. Yeah, like he has a third. Oh yeah, out of body experience. Mm. And I was like listening to my friend talk about it. And I was like, holy shit, that's like almost flow state. Oh yeah, and yeah that book's worth a read. Oh, I I was like really into it. So we went to Japan. Me and my buddy J- Isaiah and our other friend Jante. None of us really speak Japanese. Isaiah does just barely, barely any. Mm. And uh, he was talking about, oh, I want to go see Murakami's exhibit. They actually recreated like his office space or something oh, really? like that. Yeah. Um, and so the whole time he's like, I had something I really want to do, guys. And so I'm like, okay, man, we're let's do it. I'm, yeah. I'm all for it. We'll, we'll spend a, half a day going to this place to do this and <laughs> search it for it. So we took these trains. We're walking around. It takes forever. And finally, we get to this university where it's supposed to be in. And this is towards the end of our trip. And we've been on very little sleep, drinking cups of coffee throughout the day because mm. we're having 16-hour days just, oh, really? just experiencing Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we get to this university and we start trying to ask people around in our horrible Japanese <laughs> where this, what we think is a real exhibit, but... Uh, you know fast forward it doesn't exist really they haven't built it yet and so we're asking people in a language <laughs> we don't know about something that doesn't uh, exist that's fucking i hope they sent you to the bathroom <laughs> and you're <laughs> just like oh this is a lovely toilet he's always working here wait that's fucking dumb <laughs> dude and not only that we got one of our friend jante he started he got so upset with me and isaiah because his japanese was horrendous mm. okay and Isaiah's in the middle of trying to talk to this one Japanese dude. And you know how that culture is very polite or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then out of nowhere, Jante is like, uh, Sumimasen, Sumimasen, uh, Kurasai. And it, like just interrupting and trying to like talk to him too. Speed. I, you know, I like that we all have some Japanese somehow. Oh, how yeah, d- just like barely <laughs> yeah, but like how did you learn it? We found it in a book, you know, on like, like on the internet. And so he was basically saying to him, excuse me, please, excuse me, please. <laughs> and it's just like, dude, you're terrifying this Japanese yeah. guy right now. About something that doesn't exist. <laughs> he you know turns we're... around to me and Isaiah and we're, we're cracking up. We're laughing in front of this Japanese dude. And, uh, and Josh, John is like, yeah, your Japanese isn't any better. <laughs> and we're like, of course not. So we're roasting him the whole time. <laughs> And they're leading us to this library where we think it is. We ask the librarian, and then the most Japanese, quietest voice. Like, she was talking like this. She was like, really? She no way. Oh, dude, I'm not exaggerating. And we were we were trying so hard not to cackle. And, dude, we looked like complete idiots. And they're like, oh, that doesn't exist. That's, no way. It hasn't been built. Yeah. Jesus. It was, oh, man. It was so wonderful how stupid we looked. <laughs> yeah, that's unbelievably stupid. You didn't Google it? He did. We were like, we trust you. No we way. think you know what where, where it exists. That's a good last. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We were pissing ourselves. He was upset for us for like most of the evening for laughing at him. And it was <laughs> well worth it. Uh, yeah, oh here gosh. that's I, I don't even know how to fucking um react to that. You went looking in Japan. That sounds like a Murakami story. That's what Isaiah said. <laughs> he gone around looking for something that doesn't exist. All the time it existed inside you. There and you the go. book ends and you're like, what the fuck did I just read? And it was the, exp- it was the journey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These books are a journey though. I, remember, I can't remember the last one I read. Fuck. I was like, I don't like this book. Halfway through I was like, okay, something's going on. I think I know what's happening. And then the next chapter you're like, who the fuck is this character? What's happening? And then at the end, I was getting towards the end and I was like, this motherfucker isn't going to wrap everything up. And I started getting pissed because I was enjoying it and I yeah. knew he wasn't going to leave me satisfied. And then at the end, I was like, that fuck got me again. And I just bought another one of his straight away. Yeah. It's like a bad TV show. <laughs> yeah. Where it starts but he's unreal. Great. I remember this like this publisher told me ages ago, he's like, you should read Murakami. And I trusted him. I was like, all right, this guy's read a lot of books. And then I read one. He told me like, what's the first one I read? A Wild Sheep Chase. He goes, start here. So I read it and I was like, oh yeah, that's really good. And I was like, but I can't articulate why it's so good. Mm. And he was like, oh yeah, that's that's why it's so good. Mm. You can't articulate it. And I was like, 
Yeah, it's weird, all right. Because he, he's, if you think about it, he's very simplistic. I'm reading another book. I can't even remember the name now, but it, like, it was lauded. It was like, oh, this guy's a great author. But he'll use like too many words to describe something, whereas Murakami would just be simple as fuck. And you're just like, oh, yeah, yeah I can't even explain it. You know who's the most lean, the two most lean comedians, in my opinion? Mitch Hedberg. Mm. In terms of their jokes, m- they need every single word to yeah. make their joke work. Yeah. Like it doesn't work. They Like they've cut out all the fat. <laughs> yeah. Him and Anthony Jeselnik. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, two of them. And you know who else? Uh, Seinfeld. Oh. Yeah, I've seen... What's the documentary? I've seen something somewhere and he's just like... Sometimes you just... You'll have... The joke doesn't work until I take out a word. And I'm like, all right, now it works. So he's not... Every single word of his is planned. Mm. Where you wouldn't think it... Because Mitch Hedberg is just one-liners more or less. And Anthony Jeselnik. You can see too, it's just like every word's... Uh, like he knows what he's doing but with Seinfeld you wouldn't realize it as much but he's like sometimes I might say me at the set setup and then me in the punchline and there's too many me's there mm. so you gotta change it so he's like every word whereas if I go up there I'll just fucking ramble <laughs> and I'm like I might fucking just tell a joke in a joke by mistake it still works but I'm like yeah I'm not every word yeah i couldn't do the same set twice because i'm just like oh let's see if this joke is better with this mm-hmm. so i just i have too many words so i'm i'm the i'm the kind of author that i hate <laughs> <laughs> that's why you should do uh your uh, i'm telling you man spend like a week and just do them because i yeah. think pe- people would love hearing these things yeah true yeah i should just uh, now's the time too Might i should well. do the sex did you ever read the sex poems the ones you post on Instagram, <laughs> yeah, dude. What? <laughs> yeah, I know, but they could be really popular. I think. Yeah, for certain, for certain mm. crowds, I think for sure. Yeah, because like women spend so much money on them. There is a whole dark. Yeah. Uh, what's it called? Fan fiction. Oh yeah, <sighs> yeah, that's insane. You have too much time on your hands if you're doing fan fiction for like Breaking Bad, and it's like the gay oh, fan fiction. Oh yeah, that's and hilarious. It's, yeah, oh, it's so like. I I only knew there was One Direction one that was big, where they were all like, we had fan fiction for fucking Breaking Bad, and it's gay. <laughs> I wonder, like, what before the internet, what was, like, what would these people do? Because obviously that takes a lot of energy, so that must have been pent up in them. Yeah. Like, God, man, I wish there was some gay Breaking Bad fiction. You know, Walter White and Jesse just doing it. God damn it! You've seen the two like those dinosaur sex poems or sex stories, like on Amazon. They sell a shitload. What? Yeah, like a woman having sex with a dinosaur. It's so dumb, but people make a lot of money out of it. Humans are crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Some dude was or some girl was telling me she's like. She read one of my... So, like, the sex poem started when Malibu was burning, like, two years ago. Oh, okay. And um, I saw people posting online, like, naked pictures of themselves, more or less, on the Malibu beaches. Yeah. Being like, wow, this is so sad. I can't believe my Malibu was burning. And it was just, like, some girl posted a picture of her fucking ass. And she's like, hey, heads up, my house burnt down. Uh, but we evacuated safely and it's literally a picture of her ass and then she had like you could see her hand and she had a watch and she was like hey my house burnt down but we we evacuated safely sponsored by Koi watches and it was like a real post and I was like Jesus Christ these people are insane so I like wrote a joke poem being like well I'm at the beach Malibu's burning in front of me wow this is so sad and also making me horny (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and just wrote this like dumb story. Yeah. Posted on my story and then women were like, write more. That was good. So I wrote more and I was like, I'm not writing it unless you pay me. And then women just started like vending one of me. Shut the fuck up. Oh yeah. They pay so much money. I sold the most I sold one for was like seven hundred and forty. Oh okay. Hmm. Oh, that's why I keep going. Like I made four grand a month from writing them. Yeah. I bought a car because of fucking <laughs> writing these sex. And I'll make them as stupid as I can. I have a book coming out of them. 101 sex poems. They'll, I'll have women just send me money for like, just to say thank you. They won't even want to read it. I, 
I hate humans sometimes. <laughs> At one point, it was like just before this all started, it was being pitched as a TV show, but like a big person. I was just like, I don't even know how you turn it into a show, but yeah, work away. Mark. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, oh, I should really. Remember I said about finishing stuff? I was like, is it worth to finish it? But I'm like, all right, I'm going to get this book out there and then just see what happens. Might as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, like I feel like that's okay. Here. Yeah. I but like it is also I make him as stupid as I can. I'll be talking about putting plums in a girl's ass, putting a potato in, in their mouth, trying to make him like so ridiculous, people will be like, Oh, I didn't like that one. Yeah. And every time I make it more ridiculous, they'll be like, Oh my god, that was the best one ever. Dude. Yeah. I don't it's so amazing to me. Because of the internet, again, how s- people's sexuality has exploded into the most obscure <laughs> yeah. corners oh, yeah. of kinks, fetishes. Mm. This is not super uh, kinky compared to everything else that's on there, but for some people it's super kinky. Dogging. Oh, yeah. Which, for those of you who don't know what it is, make sure you're over 18 and it. Um, they do that in Ireland, actually. Yeah. Hey, that's so freaking weird. If you really do that, oh yeah, and have strangers come in you, like, st- <laughs> dude, strangers come in you. What? Yeah, it's it's in your car or in the bush. Is a car a bush? And calling it dogging is so like. Oh yeah. There used to be a place in Ireland. We were like 16 or something, driving around my friend's mini. And uh, I'm sorry, are you Googling this right now? No. Oh, I thought you were fucking Googling dogging. I was like, I have to address this right now. Okay. You're like, oh, shit. Okay. You're like, where? His ears picked up. He's like, oh, this is something I'm into. <laughs> Bookmark this. But yeah, we'd go and there was like, it was like down by the docks. It yeah. was like a car park or a parking lot, as you call it here. And there'd be cars hanging around and be like, these dirty fuckers. And we'd pull up like we were looking for it. And you see guys put down their windows. And then we'd be like, you're fucking creep. <laughs> 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 they were 16, but like, yeah, dogging, dogging's global. Yeah. It's so weird, man. People say what, what, what people get turned on by. There's some cool documentaries, and by cool, I mean good character studies uh, <laughs> of people being in love with like the Eiffel Tower. Oh, I saw that. I remember watching that when I first came here, hungover, and I was like, these fuckers have love. They're they're happier than me, and they're fucking offense. Their or- car, the guy with the red car. <laughs> Did you see that one? The red car one, and he tells his dad, and his dad's like, "What?" Uh, I saw the whole doc. Yeah, I must have. The girl who was like lying underneath a roller coaster and it was raining. Oh my God. And she's like, oh, Frank looked so good today. And it was like a fucking pendulum roller coaster. And there was like oil dripping off it. She's like, he's happy to see me. And she like lays under the roller coaster and there's oil dripping on her face. And she's like, we just had sex. <laughs> Dude. How, when is it okay to go, oh, you're crazy? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I do feel bad for the parents, and they're just like, that's her hobby. And she's like, it's not a hobby, Mom. I love the Eiffel Tower. That's so crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I try to be respectful of everybody's you know, choices, but what, what? I guess they're not harming anybody, so I guess that's okay. But they have to know that that's not uh, yeah. the norm. It's funny they're not harming anyone, and they're happy. And then you look at other people, you'd be like, you should ha- you should consider falling in love with the Eiffel Tower. It'll give you meaning. <laughs> I saw another documentary, like, um, I can't remember, is it Ecuador or something? Like, the young boys will have sex with donkeys yeah, to figure out, like, how to make love to a woman. South America. Yeah, yeah. you're just like, and it's fully normal to them. Insane. Yeah. As you would say, unreal. <laughs> yeah, that's unreal. And the dude who's like married and he'll be like driving home and he's like, let's have a little detour. And he'll do a detour to go meet his like mistress who's a donkey. Oh. And he'll just show him. And he's just like on camera, blase. And I'm just like, there's something for everyone. There's a great, a great 
Great. Oh, side note, I would rather um, have sex with a roller coaster than that heiress you were talking about earlier. <laughs> One hundred. Like, like that's not even yeah, yeah. A, a debate in my safer. mind. Yeah, I'll fuck the metal thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's much safer. I'll get a tetanus shot afterwards, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm all good to go, man. Um, I'd love to see you randomly drunk one night and you're just making love to a gate. And I'm like, <laughs> Mark, that heiress hit me up and I just saw this and I thought, yeah, you know, you know, man. You want in on this? No? All right. In Ireland, we have sex with our beds growing up. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. What? <laughs> You'll just be like, oh, it's kind of cold. And then you just be like in your bed and you just be like, oh, I'm fucking the bed. Oh. <laughs> I remember, yeah, Jesus. Wait, you mean like dry humping your, <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right, man. That's more detailed. It just sounds like you just got on the side of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. like <laughs> you put a little hole. Yeah, you just dry hump in the bed. You're like, what's going on? What are these feelings? Oh, my God. Um, there is another documentary, and it was this old video on the internet where they were interviewing this, this uh, girl and guy and he was showing her her his pony, like a horse pony. Mm. And they were secretly both into having sex with horses. Jesus. And she went, she was like, you know what? I'm going to see if he's into this. <laughs> no way. And she went down on the horse. <laughs> what? Full, no like, way. Oh, yeah. She was gambling he would be into it. And he was like, jackpot. <laughs> <laughs> really? Actually, I promise you, man. Jesus Christ. If that if that's not true love right there, yeah. I don't know what it those people were meant to be with each other. Yeah. How that is do you ever see like when really creepy fuckers and are like a like they'll fucking kidnap kids together as a couple. And oh, they're like Yeah, those stories. And then you're just like, how do they find each other that they're bought into that niche psychotic thing? That's a great question. It, like even the fucking the two with the horse, is that like you're not finding that on Tinder? What do you went to? Oh I God, like horses. No. <laughs> I mean, I feel like now it would be more acceptable. Oh yeah, probably. But the this the kid the kidnappers like yeah like who who like slowly brings that up? How? Yeah, <laughs> that's so dark, dude. That's just, so fucking dark. You're like eating a chicken dinner. You're just playing with the peas, and you're like, "Fuck it, I'll try." <laughs> so I have something to tell you, and you're just like, "Fuck me too." Like that's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be that mental, and you're like, "Oh fuck, yeah, I've been trying to tell you too." And then they bond. They have the best sex of their life, <laughs> and then they go kidnapping kids. So dark, man. <laughs> I bet you that's how it freaking happens. Mm. I can't remember. There's some documentary about the fucking husband and wife in England. I can't remember. Westons or something. Mm. And they were so creepy. You're like, how do they find each other? I don't know, man. Yeah. The people who like also kill people and eat them together. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. How would you find a fellow cannibal? Hey, what if we ate... <laughs> In the Nancy, 70s, right? too. <laughs> yeah, in the 70s, where it's not like online and you met in the fucking weird. Like, you met a fedo cannibal down the pub. And, like, the 70s, you know, like, people have been civilized for a little bit. It's not mm. like it's the 1400s where yeah. everybody's, like, Jesus, uneducated imagine. and savages. <laughs> yeah. like, dude, how stupid was, like, the common person in the 1400s? Really think about it. <laughs> I think there's more stupid people in LA now. You know what? <laughs> yeah. You make a great point there. Yeah, they're going to say the same about us in 20 years. How stupid were those people during Corona? Oh, my God, dude. Uh, I, the stupidity sometimes of some people out here is just mind-boggling. Mm. The, it's a lack of care. I don't know. In Ireland, do people, is it more of a community? Do you feel like that? Yeah. Because yeah. like, they kind of, there's always, there's always the handful who are like, oh, you're fucking idiots. Of course. But like, more or less in Ireland, when this all started, everyone was like, all right, we need to do this. Let's do it. Yeah. Especially like pub shutting down. You would never think that would happen in Ireland. And then they they were meant to reopen and they shut down again. And no one freaked. Whereas here, you just started freaking fucking early. Be like, it's a conspiracy. And you're just like, ah, oh, for fuck's sake. You know what I think the problem is with America? Since it's such like a... I think hodgepodge is the correct, like a mixing pot, yeah. excuse me, of cultures, of people. 
and there is no sense of culture. Like, what is American culture? It it changes mm. from East Coast, Middle America. You go up north yeah. towards the Great Lakes. You go into the the Rockies. It's different. Their culture is different. The West Coast is different. Yeah, it's all big. It, yeah, exactly. Mm. And you got a bunch of like different people from different ethnic groups coming in, and then you have people who are conservative in their views and liberal and it's like whoa 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 yeah, whoa yeah, yeah. there's too many people here yeah. to agree on most things yeah i know and i feel like in america too if you like caring is almost weak <laughs> like so if you're like oh yeah i want to let's do it together you're like nah, this is weakness i don't know i yeah it's it's definitely so big you can't like expect you'd hope everyone would pull together but it's so like you America's so fucking big. So even if you were to be like, oh, France is not as weird as America. Because in Europe, a lot will be like, well, Americans are so weird. Like, we'll so see some of your weird people here. And you're like, you go extra weird. But if you were to take all of Europe, like America, you'd be like, oh, yeah, Europe's kind of weird too. It's so fucking big here. Yeah. The, the, the United States of America. I mean, when you really think about it, it's 50 states trying to... Yeah, be on board that's like a on the country same. in every fucking in Europe. Oh my God, you're absolutely right, and so that's why I'm always like, nobody's here united with an underlying foundation mm. of of things. The only thing is freedom, and it's <laughs> yeah. like I'm entitled to that. It's yeah. like, uh, are you are you utilizing it the right way though? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's uh, tough freedom though. without education yeah. is also a oh, dangerous thing, which is everywhere. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. It's the dumbness is the key. I don't know, man. It's um I hope things get better. I hope people I don't know. It's it's it takes first of all, it takes more energy to hate somebody. Mm. <laughs> you know? But like yeah. And then it's yeah, it's education. I remember like going back to weird documentaries. I saw there's one about it's on YouTube, it's like twelve minutes about fucking uh this incest family. Oh, okay. And a dude shows up. And just, they're all fucking. And one dude is like, because he's incest, he's just, he doesn't talk. He just barks. You hear a dog barking and there's a guy like gapped. He's exactly what you think as an incest guy. Is it in Virginia? Like I that, think so, yeah. Yeah, I think we've seen the same things. Uh, <laughs> and the dude is just barking for answers. And you're just like, they just don't know any better. Like no one's been like, oh, you should stop fucking each other. And they're like, it's such the house they live in. I would fucking, if you were brought there, that's a proper Howard house. Like everyone's, I, my a girl I know sent it to me. And I was like, why did you make me watch that? She's like, it's even worse when you realize they're all going to have sex after the cameraman leaves. And it's like a mother, a sister, their sons, the dad. Yeah, it's so hot. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wait, what are you talking about? Um, that's a good Friday night in. The 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 incest people too who the incest people who had sex with each other so many times their skin started to turn blue. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Some condition happened to them where no they, way. They, they were called the blue people. Jesus. Of like the Appalachians or some place. Oh like yeah, that's the same place as this weird crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, 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 <laughs> stop fucking each other. You're turning blue. <laughs> Please stop. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is going on? Dude, humans are the most insane thing <laughs> ever. That's pretty, yeah, it's full on. Jesus. What we do is so backwards sometimes, and at the same, at, and at other times, it's so beautiful what some people do. And like, <laughs> so like, oh my God, they're expressing true love, you know, through art, through helping people, through generosity. You're like, holy shit. True and habits. you have like Sex this heiress who's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It's a great place though. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> I know you have crazy heartburn. I don't, I don't want to take too much of your time. Um, <laughs> seriously man it was such a blast to have on you're welcome back anytime to play oh, yeah. anything you do man nice one yeah and I'll uh come, i'll come back reading some sex poems oh yeah whenever your book comes out that would be actually <laughs> actually that'd be wonderful we'll do, like, little, yeah that'd be wonderful yeah yeah um any shows or you want to plug anything else real quick before we go mm, no, i'm good your podcast oh a random podcast it's on itunes anywhere yeah is it ever gonna go on video or just yeah i just get lazy i'll do it all right yeah. <laughs> Plus, I'd be. Yeah, I should just buy a camera. Yeah, I'm just lazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> With this, I like just being able to plug in, ramble, blackout, and then 
I'm done. It's fair. Do you mm-hmm. have anybody else? Uh, you do all the uploading, I'm yeah. assuming. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Keep the work to a minimum. <laughs> um, all right, dude. Thanks for some coming Cheers, on. Lads. And yeah. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, Peyton. Yeah. Let's play us out. Let's thank Adobe Radio. Let's thank Nice Guy Digital. Thank you, Peyton, for all the hard work you do on the show. Thank you, Alexander Gorski. Thank you, Mark Hayes. Be sure you follow him. Thank you to all of our new subscribers on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. And for those of you who wrote new reviews for us on iTunes, uh, we really appreciate you guys. And yeah, it's been a great week. My phone is blowing up, so that makes me feel not anxious at all. Um, And yeah, always remember to listen, think, and then talk.